Hey guys, welcome to this week's edition of Off the Shelf. Uh, this is a this is a video where we talk about some of the latest sporting biographies that we've read. And today we're going to be talking about Brandon and Jack's recent book, Twenty Eight. Um, Brandon Jack, obviously, most people would know a uh, former Sydney Swans player. Um, as the name suggests, he played twenty eight games for the Swans. Um, brother of Sydney Swans great Kieran Jack, um, who was his teammate at the time, and also um, his father Gary Jack, who is a legendary rugby league player for the West Tigers, represented Australia, New South Wales, four-time Dalian medalist. Um, a, a, an awesome book. I couldn't give it a better enough uh, review. Um, what I love about it is it just goes into a completely different perspective on, on um, the professional footy career talks about um, what it's like to sort of live life on the fringe of, of uh, senior footy and, you know, the inner demons um, that players face in pursuit of their perception of success. And um, yeah, it's, it's really, really well written. He's actually a professional writer himself now. So um, the, t- the tone of the book is awesome. Yeah. A little bit of heard about the book. Like he, I think he uses journal um, entries or from his playing days to get, you know, explore some pretty deep, dark sort of areas. Is that right? Yeah, that's it. So um, he interweaves a, a lot of um, different entries from the journal that he obviously kept while he was playing. Um, and as he said, it, it touches some pretty pretty deep and touchy subjects. Um, you can see through the book, he just progressively gets like more fixated on on proving himself as a player because you got to remember he, you know, he's he's sort of trying. You can see he's trying to emulate that success or his idea of success that he his his father and his brother created as as professional sportsmen. And you can sort of see that he has this idea about, you know, sort of either either going better than them or or repeating what they'd gotten up to. And as you can see through the book, it just progressively gets just more down on himself and more and and more down about the idea of being a professional athlete. Brandon was coming through the Swans at a similar time to a lot of the current stars. Um, playing for the Swans today, like Dane Rampey, Harry, Harry Cunningham, Jake Lloyd, Isaac Heaney. Um, and he makes reference to these guys a, a few times through the book in those journal entries about how he wants to, you know, he sort of like talks down the form that, that they're in after they get selected over him. At one point, he makes reference to um, at the start of the 2015 season, uh, horse picks Isaac Heaney over Brandon for round one in, in 2015. And he talks about how he's sitting in the stands at ANZ Stadium, just his eyes locked on Isaac Heaney every touch he gets. He's willing him to make a mistake and make sure, he, like hoping that he misses a mark or misses a kick just so that he gets picked the next week. In my third year, Isaac Heaney came in and played round one and I thought that that spot was mine. Like I'd had this great preseason. The, the media was saying I was going to take the next step. But Heans played, and Heans is a far better player than I was. But in my mind, I'm convincing myself that spot's mine. I'm like, fuck you guys. I'm the best small forward in this team. That's my spot. So then I'm watching the game from the grandstands, and, and every time Heans is near the footy, I'm like, don't touch it. I'm like, I hope he doesn't touch it. Or I'm counting his stats. I know how many stats he's had in my head. And I'm kind of like, all right, if he doesn't get any more, then you know they might drop him because I've been dropped for having 12 touches. Other times, I remember I, I wrote like fuck horse a few times in my diary because I was like, he's not picking me, even though he's not the one really making the complete decision. But you pick people to be like, I'm going to prove you wrong. Like, I'm going to make you look stupid. I'm going to have 40 touches in the resis. Fucking toxic when you think about it. Yeah, he, he, he's in this pretty toxic place for a lot of the time he's playing for the Swans, um, which, which is I think is really like... A really incredible perspective that you get um, into his life as a professional athlete that sometimes you don't really you don't really get to learn um, through some sport books. So yeah, it's 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 pretty insane. That's wild. So it's called twenty eight. He played twenty eight games. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. I'd I'd argue in most people's metrics that's pretty successful career. It's it's twenty eight more than I than I've played um, at, at any yeah. level particularly. But at the whole time, all this is going off, wasn't he? I don't know this for a fact, but wasn't he also estranged from his parents? Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, not the whole time through his career. I think it's about 2014, uh, he says in the book, is when when the relationships really started to break down. Um, you can sort of see by the tone of his writing at the early stage of the book that um, he's, ne- he's not quite sure what his relationship with his parents is like. I think he had a lot, he, he sort of sensed a lot of pressure um, from his father, Gary Jack, who I mentioned earlier, was, was a professional, a very well-known professional rugby league player who we all know. Um, he doesn't say the words, but you can sort of see he does feel a lot of pressure from his parents. Um, and and as, the, as the book progresses towards the end, 
the relationship really does break down. He doesn't really specify the incident that caused it, but he does make reference to, um, I think, Christmas Day in 2014. His father and him had sort of had a bit of a running and he just walked out of the house on Christmas Day. And from this point on, has um, I don't think he's said a word to either of his parents. It, it's not just Brandon, who's estranged from the family. Kieran as well doesn't talk to his parents anymore. So the family itself is 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 very fragmented. It's yeah, it's not just Brandon, but yeah, he he definitely struggles with it. You can tell throughout the book. Change of tack here. What's his relationship <laughs> with with Dicko from um, Australian Idol? <laughs> that, that, that is a change of pace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, it's it's funny. Dicko somehow makes his way into the book of of Australian Idol fame. Uh, Ian Dick, Dixon. So um, Brandon as the longer he gets into his career, sort of starts focusing more and more on his creative pursuits. He's quite an artistic person, um, has always played guitar. Anyway, towards the end of his career, he starts picking up guitar quite seriously and um, starts a band because I think he realizes at that point that, that that's what he wants to do with his life once he finishes up in footy. some songs um some somehow dicko finds his uh gets his hands on these songs and and sort of urges brandon to start a punk band um which he goes out and does dicko sort of trying to get him this record deal and sets them up with a, a recording space in a warehouse in our and, and brandon and dicko strike up this pretty strong bond for a pretty short amount of time the band goes out to watch a gig with dicko and the drummer in brandon's band just absolutely obliterates himself, gets extremely drunk, um, thrown out of this pub and Dicko has to deal with it. Um, and he pretty much just says like, stuff this, I'm, <laughs> I'm done with you guys and just sort of ditches the project. Do you, do you have the book on you? Yeah. Can you read me a passage? How many pages is it? The book goes to 298 pages. Ooh, I like uh, 266. Could you read me a passage from there, please, Ed? I can. When I walked into the backyard, I saw one of my teammates holding a glass of red and smoking a cigarette. Lying in the back, lying in the garden behind him was another teammate, shivering, wrapped in a blanket, gripping a bottle of Smirnoff vodka. I sat at the table, opened a carton of Winfield Reds and lit one up, then took a swig, swig of vodka. There were only four of us there for a while until I sent a message to the whole team telling them to come to the backyard we were in. I said they should come only if they had each brought a slab of cruisers. I don't know why I said cruisers, but by midday, there were 40 odd slabs of cruisers on the table in the backyard. The next morning, I saw that my exit meeting was scheduled for 12.20 on Wednesday. Beneath it, there was a team meeting at 1 p.m. They always filled the hour before that final review with players heading towards a certain fate. So it's talking about this is pretty much his last day, as a, the night before his last day as a Swans player, which is before the exit meeting where horse... And, and the footy manager at the Swans at the time, Tom Harley, who's now the CEO, said, um, your time's up. Well, it's pretty much a mutual decision, but he, they pretty much said to him, you know, your time's up here. So interestingly enough, I read about this book that because he is a writer and the plan with the book was never to touch the topics of football or family at all. Um, the initial manuscript that he written had nothing to do with those two topics. Um, when he rewrit the manuscript, there was just this outpouring of feelings and thoughts towards those two topics. Um, and it just made him realize like there was obviously a lot to unpack there. I think that's why I really like it. You can sort of tell that these are still very fresh and raw feelings that he has, which is really touching for the reader. Does it feel like he's in a better place now? Having it? I think, I think he's definitely in a better place now. I think he can understand better, you know, what he was going through as a player and, I guess that pursuit of success in the face of what his his father and his brother had achieved. And I think very comfortable in the fact that, you know, he didn't quite get there, but, you know, came out perhaps more comfortable in his own skin and, and what he wants to be in life, which, which is definitely, a, it definitely ends in a very positive note. Thanks a lot for watching Off The Shelf, guys, uh, where we reviewed Brandon Jack's 28. Make sure you like and subscribe the video and head down into the description. We're going to add a link to the book where you can purchase it if you're interested. Cool.